Good morning to everyone, to Lassero who joins us today, to our sign language interpreter, and good morning to everyone tuned in to this briefing. Today, 1,470 people are hospitalized in Cuba. 58 are under observation. There are 783 suspected cases and 626 confirmed active cases. Quite a high number. Yesterday, we managed to process almost 8,000 samples, 7,948 to be exact, in our various molecular biology laboratories. 3,033 of the samples were processed at the Pedro Curi Tropical Medicine Institute. 992 in Havana's Hygiene, Epidemiology and Microbiology Centre, 833 in Via Claras, 284 in Santiago de Cubas, 564 in the Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology Centre Lab, 463 in the Hermanos Almajedas Hospital, 407 in the Manuel Fajardo Hospital Laboratory, 390 in the Molecular Immunology Center, 370 in the Naval Hospital, 267 in the Civil Defense Laboratories, 198 in the National Center for Genetics, and 147 in the Fructoso Rodriguez Hospital Laboratory. As such, we were able to process 7,948 samples yesterday. Of the samples processed, 82 tested positive for COVID-19. That's 82 people with the virus. This brings the total number of samples processed in the entire country since the pandemic began to 454,724, of which 4,459 people, or 0.98% of all cases, have tested positive for the virus. As I always mention, samples from all of the country's provinces and the Isle of Youth Special Municipality were tested. The most, 5,408 from Havana, 318 from Pinar del Rio, 637 from Matanzas, 473 from Artemisa, 128 from Cienfuegos, 316 from Villa Clara, 409 from Ciego de Avila, 131 from Camagüey, 101 from Las Tunas, and so on and so forth from all of the country's provinces. All of the 82 positive cases diagnosed yesterday are Cubans. 75 or 91.5% of the 82 positive cases are confirmed case contacts. Hence the importance of tracing, isolating and testing everyone within this population group. This means that 3,986 people or 89.4% of all diagnosed cases in Cuba had contact with someone who had previously tested positive for the virus. Of the 82 cases diagnosed yesterday, the source of infection linked to seven is yet to be determined. This means that the source of infection in 46 cases reported over the last 15 days is still being investigated. Yesterday, as I mentioned, no one to have tested positive for the virus contracted it abroad meaning that imported cases remain at 427. Of the 82 diagnosed cases yesterday, 
41 are male for 50.1% of all cases and 41 are female representing 49.9% of all diagnosed cases on the island. 63 or 76.8% of the 82 cases yesterday were asymptomatic at the time of testing. There has been information circulating that claims that asymptomatic cases don't transmit the virus. This is false. In fact, asymptomatic cases sometimes carry a larger viral load than those with symptoms. Overall, 58.87% of all positive cases on the island since the pandemic began have been asymptomatic at the time of testing. And this figure rises to 64.8% of diagnosed cases in the last 15 days. By age group, 10 positive cases diagnosed yesterday are under the age of 18. These represent paediatric cases. For a total of 482 children to have tested positive for the virus in Cuba. Of these 482 cases, 395, or 82%, have responded well to treatment and been discharged from hospital. Meanwhile, 25 people diagnosed with the virus yesterday are between 20 and 39 years of age. 31 cases are between 40 and 59, and 16 are over the age of 60. Of the 82 cases diagnosed yesterday, 39 belong to Havana, 37 to Ciego de Avila, 4 to Sancti Spiritus, and 1 each to Matanzas and Artemisa. By municipality, the case belonging to Artemisa is from the municipality of San Antonio de los Baños. The four cases from Sancti Spiritus belong to the municipality of Hatibonico. This is a new episode of local transmission in the province linked to a few people who had contact with a positive case. Work is underway to treat these people and stop the spread of infection. The case from Matanzas belongs to the municipality of Cárdenas. There are 37 cases from Ciego de Avila, a high number and all spread throughout the province. Ciego de Avila is therefore facing a new episode of limited local transmission. Measures to curb the spread of the virus are being taken. The 37 cases reported yesterday therefore belong to the municipalities of Ciego de Avila with 24, Chambas with 2, Primero de Enero with 1, Morón with 3, Florencia 1, Ciro Redondo 2, Mahagua 2, Bolivia 1, and Baragua 1 case. The 39 cases from Havana belong to the municipalities of Boyeros with 8, Marianao with 4, Diez de Octubre with 3, Arroyo Naranjo 3, Habana del Este, 3, Playa, Plaza, Centro Habana, Cerro, Guanabacoa, Cotorro, San Miguel, and La Lisa, with two cases each, and Regla and La Habana Vieja, with one case each. As you can see, cases have been reported in every municipality in the capital, a reflection of just how widely spread the virus is. Yesterday's results therefore mean that Ciego de Avila has the highest confirmed case rate per 100,000 inhabitants over the last 15 days, with 21.28. Havana follows with a rate of 20.42, higher than yesterday. Artemisa's rate drops slightly to 13.40, as does Matanzas with 
and Pinar de Rios with 1.37. The new cases reported yesterday in Sancti Spiritus mean that the province has a rate of 0.86. Mayabeque follows with 0.52, then Las Tunas with 0.93, Camagüey with 0.13, and Villa Clara with 0.39. This means that Cuba's rate rises slightly to 5.87 per 100,000 inhabitants over the last 15 days. To summarize, of the 4,459 people who have been diagnosed with the virus thus far in Cuba, 626, or 14%, are active hospitalized cases. 614, or 98.1%, are clinically stable. Yesterday, no COVID-19 related deaths occurred in the country, meaning that the COVID-19 death toll on the island remains at 104, with a mortality rate of 2.28%, lower than the global rate of 3.26%, and regional rate, which stands at 3.47%. That said, for us here on the island, a rate of 2.28 is considered to be very high. As I always mention, two people were evacuated at the start of the pandemic. Yesterday, 27 people were discharged from hospital. A negative result in regards to the discharge to confirmed case ratio. 23 people were discharged in Havana and one each in Artemisa, Matanzas, Camagüey and Santiago de Cuba. This means that to date 3,727 people or 83.6% of all confirmed cases in Cuba have recovered from the virus. Today, one patient continues to be in a critical state and 11 reported as serious, one of whom is being treated at the Octavio de la Concepcion Military Hospital in Camagüey. Yesterday, two patients joined the group of those reported as serious. One critical patient passed to serious, one serious patient passed to closely monitored and one being closely monitored passed to serious. This is the situation in Cuba, a complex situation as you can see, especially in Havana, with important cases of local transmission, as well as in Ciego de Avila, Matanzas, Pinat del Rio, Artemisa, and Villa Clara. Some of these episodes are being resolved, However, the risk of infection still remains high throughout the country. Now we are going to turn our attention to the world. As of yesterday, COVID-19 continues to be present in the same 185 countries. Yesterday, 215,851 people were diagnosed with the virus for a total of 27,366,648 confirmed cases since the start of the pandemic. Yesterday, 3,820 people died of the virus for a total of 893,084 COVID-19 fatalities and a mortality rate of 3.26%. The region of the Americas, which accounts for 52.19% of all cases worldwide, reported 53,434 new cases yesterday, for a total of 14,284,841 people to have been diagnosed with the virus. Meanwhile, as of yesterday, the death toll in the Americas stands at 496,229, 
and a mortality rate of 3.47%. The United States continues to top the list of countries worst affected by the pandemic, with 6,300,671 confirmed cases. Next comes India with 4,280,424 cases. Then Brazil with 4,147,794 confirmed cases and a high number of COVID-19 fatalities. Then comes Russia, followed by countries from our region, Peru, Colombia, Mexico, Argentina, and Chile, with an important number of confirmed cases and fatalities. Cuba places 114th among the worst affected countries in the world. This is the information we have on the behavior of the pandemic in Cuba and the world.